What if I told you that this costed me $50? Let's talk about it. So let's address the elephant in the room. This airsoft gun is completely 3D printed, the entire body at least. Obviously all the attachments and, and whatnot isn't, but it's really cool that you can attach all of your regular stuff on there as well. Let's talk about the process of printing this, uh, making it, why you'd want to do something like that. Uh, is it worth it? And then we'll break down the costs, of course. I've really wanted an MCX for a long time. I think the MCX is just such a cool gun, the SIG MCX. The Airsoft version, I believe, is around $700 here in Canada, and that's certainly an expensive price tag to pay when you're kind of paying for the performance of around a three dollars to $400 gun. Uh, it's nothing spectacular. And most people that I know who run one have stripped out all the internals and replaced it with their own upgrades and, and whatnot. So I figured, hey, is there a way that I can get the body of an MCX for cheap? And the cheapest way I could find was to 3D print. Now, I tried this project quite a while ago and uh, back then I just had a resin 3D printer. I print miniatures for D&D and stuff like that uh, for tabletop games. Um, so I figured, hey, I'll just give it a shot on my resin printer. It didn't really work too well because my resin printer is super tiny and it's just not the right material to be printing uh, such a big project like this. But recently I picked up a FDM printer. I personally have the uh, Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. Um, I got it for around $300. Um, it's definitely a great printer for the price. I've had zero issues whatsoever. Um, it's just a fantastic printer. Um, but I picked that up for other reasons other than this. But if you were going to just build this project, then 350 bucks might be your deal killer right there. But hey, if you've got a 3D printer kicking around, or you've got a friend who does, then you can maybe uh, pay for just the material costs and the files and whatnot, and they can print it for you. That's maybe an option as well. So um, in terms of the files, uh, full credit to the guy who made this, uh, I believe it's IAP uh, Infrastructure Airsoft Parts. Um, he has a bunch of different 3D printed airsoft kits. There's a ton of different ones out there on the market from free to not free. This one I paid around $25 to $30 for, I believe, um, for the files alone. Everything that you need to print this is, is in there and it's fully compatible with your V2 gearboxes and whatnot. So you can print that. It took me a long time to print quite a few different pieces the stock is obviously one piece the upper is one piece the lower is one piece pistol grips one piece the uh, forward um, like handguard mount is a whole separate piece just because of the size of my printer and then the handguard is a separate piece as well barrel etc um, so lots of prints lots of time that's mainly what you're paying for with this uh, what you save in costs you're gonna spend in time. Uh, it does take a long time to print. Each print took me on average for the upper and lower, like the upper and lower alone was around 20 hours to print. Uh, so definitely quite some time. But hey, you can just set it and forget it and it'll let a rip tater chip and by the end of it, you've got an MCX, which is pretty rad. So in terms of costs, again, uh, going back to that, in terms of filament costs, so I bought a couple rolls of filament. PLA Plus is what I used. It's a little bit more durable, and honestly, this thing's pretty solid. Um, and I brought, I got three rolls, didn't need all three. If you do it right the first time, you could probably get away with all of it on one roll of filament, which is around $20. So that's pretty insane. Uh, and then another 30 bucks for the files. So you're looking at about 50 bucks for this entire project, uh, which is pretty sweet. Um, now, in terms of internals, I've got the um, Backdraft Innovations Phoenix HPA engine on the inside here, which is like the cheapest HPA engine on the market, kind of fitting with the rest of the theme. Now that I've got it built, what are my thoughts on it? Well, I've got an MCX, and that's super cool. Uh, I definitely like this in my collection. It's just kind of a cool piece to be like, yeah, I printed that. I made that entire thing myself. Um, and it's definitely pretty cool and it looks cool. Um, also, I printed the upper in gray because there's no Battleship Gray um, Airsoft version, but there is a Battleship Gray one of the real version of the MCX, which is cool. Um, so I wanted to try that. So I've got the maybe one and only Battleship Gray MCX 
um, for Airsoft, which is pretty rad. But overall, I'm very impressed with the like stiffness of it. Uh, you've got a little bit of rattle, a little bit of play. Um, there's still a few things I need to clean up with like pins and whatnot. I just kind of slapped her together. But honestly, it, like it's an airsoft gun. I wouldn't want to fall on it though. <laughs> um, it's certainly not the most durable feeling at least. It kind of feels like a Nerf gun if I'm being honest. Um, you know, there's something to be said about running a full metal airsoft replica. It's just kind of cool and it's kind of fun and it feels so real. That's why we play airsoft, a lot of us at least, is because it feels so real. Um, and that's why we don't go play paintball because paintball looks goofy and it, it isn't real. So having a, a solid feeling replica, there's something to that. And maybe spending the extra 600 bucks is worth that for you. Um, and you know, you save your time and effort printing this bad boy, but it's still pretty cool. Um, is it something that I'm gonna game all the time? It's gonna be my main primary weapon. Absolutely not. Um, but it's kind of, again, a cool one in the collection. I definitely will game it at some point here and just try it out. I would love to try it indoors for CQB, especially. I think it'd be really fun. It's certainly not a replacement for steel or really well-built polymer uh, airsoft guns. Uh, it just feels a little toyish, if that makes sense. But it is very cool and uh, I can continue to print more hand guards for this. There's a ton out there. Um, I can you know, increase the inner barrel length by printing a new outer barrel or just extensions for the outer barrel. This outer barrel is 3D printed and I've got a tracer unit on there. Like, like it's crazy. It's just so cool. The optics mount is of course uh, 3D printed as well. It's like the Hydra mount, the GBRS um, group Hydra mount. Um, the stock, this is just a free one I found. It's a little jank, but hey, it does the trick. Um, and yeah, you can just continue to modify this thing and, and kind of go nuts. 3D printing is definitely a really cool innovation for Airsoft, I think. I think the more beneficial use case is printing um, accessories like hand guards or uh, grips or uh, optics mounts, things like that. You know, pay 40 bucks for a vertical grip. Hey, I can print it for a dollar, right? Like, that's pretty cool. I think that's where 3D printing is going to benefit the most. But having a fully 3D printed replica is pretty cool and uh, it's definitely something that I would check out if you're at all interested. Uh, it's definitely worth it. All in all, I'm very happy with the final product. I think it's very cool. And uh, yeah, I've got an MCX in my collection. Pretty stoked. If this is something you're interested in, I will have the links down in the description below so you can download all the files. Um, big shout out to IAP um, for making these files available for the rest of us on the airsoft market, which is super dope. Um, but yeah, that's going to pretty much do it for today's video, you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Stay awesome. Peace.